In the following lecture, uh, we are going to discuss uh, the Boltzmann distribution. I am going to give a lecture on uh, describing what a Boltzmann distribution looks like and the factors that affect this distribution. Uh, the Boltzmann distribution is simply the distribution of energies of particles and these distributions, uh, distribution of energies of particles could be in solids, liquids or gases. So here over here I have uh, drawn a sample of gas. Uh, and these are all these gas particles and they are in a container and they have uh, kinetic energy. So these particles are randomly moving around, bumping into each other and bumping with the walls of the container. So, so they are randomly moving about and um, uh, each particle has a different amount of energy because remember when particles collide with each other, uh, some particles would lose energy, some particles would gain energy. So some particles would be traveling faster, they would have more kinetic energy. Other particles, for example, this over here is going to have lesser energy, it's moving at a slower speed. So all these particles, uh, they're not going to be exactly at the same energy. They're randomly losing or gaining uh, electrons. So they would all be at different, uh, all, all are going to have different energy levels. So the energy would be distributed, uh, uh, each particle having its own specific amount of energy. But uh, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to try and plot uh, the energy distribution of uh, how the energy is distributed between the particles, how many particles have a specific energy and so on and so forth. So let me draw the graph first. So here is your typical Boltzmann distribution uh, and this is your graph. The first thing I'm going to tell you about is the, are the axes. So you have uh, a horizontal axis which is the energy axis. So this is your axis, this denotes the energy of the particles in the container and the vertical axis the number of particles. So, so the height of the graph, uh, the vertical direction of the graph represents uh, the number of particles at a particular energy. So as you can see and all the time you are going to have this typical skewed distribution. Uh, there would be lots of particles at uh, a particular energy. So for example at this energy the number of particles are a lot at high energy the number of particles are lesser at very low energy the number of particles are also lesser so as you move towards uh, higher and higher energies the number of particles would decrease and the reason is uh, uh, it's very intuitive that if you have a container and you have lots of particles and all particles are not at exactly the same energy but the distribution of energy is very close to the average energy. So for example, you have uh, this container at room temperature. So most of the particles are going to have kinetic energy that would be proportional to room temperature or somewhere around the room temperature. There would be very few particles that would be at very high energy or very few particles that would be at very, very low energy. So, so most of the energy distribution would be uh, centered around, uh, around the average energy. So this distribution over here, uh, and remember the height of the graph, if it goes upwards, that means the number of particles are higher. So at this energy, the number of particles are, are very large. You have a large quantity of particles at this energy. At low energy, the number of particles are lesser. At high energy, the number of particles are also lesser. The reason why this graph is skewed is because low energy has a limit. You can't have particles having lesser than zero energy. So the graph starts at zero. Uh, but the upper limit, there is no upper limit to energy. There would be very small probability or there would be a very tiny chance of a particle having very very high energy. It might be gaining energy when other particles are colliding with it. So there is there's a very tiny probability that there might be some particle at extremely high energy. And, but the probability or the number of particles would be very very few. Most of the particles would be at average energy. So I'm going to, what I am going to do is I am going to divide the graph into three sections. So this over here is the first section. This is the middle section. Uh, these are your particles having average energy. So you, are, uh, so the number of particles are very large. The graph has a has a very it it has a larger height. Uh, so you have more number of particles at these energies, and I've shaded that region. So, so these are my average uh, energy particles, and most of the particles would be at average energy. Uh, then you have this section over here. This is the section where the particles have high energy so you have uh, you have particles having high energy so these orange shaded particles uh, this uh, section of the graph represents the number of particles at high energy remember this axis is the energy axis so as you move to the right uh, your particles are going to have higher energy but the number of particles would be fewer as you move to extremely high energy the number of particles would decrease and they would almost become zero and similarly this green shaded section is the is the area where you have low energy particles 
Uh, so these particles are going to have low energy and they would be fewer in number as well. So most of your particles, most of your particles in your container or in any uh, space where you're studying particles, most of the particles are going to be centered around the average energy. They're going to have uh, slightly higher uh, than the average energy or slightly lesser than the average energy. So this is your Boltzmann distribution. And all your Boltzmann distribution for particles and the energies are going to look very similar. The sketch would be very, very similar to this distribution over here. Another line or label that is added to this Boltzmann distribution is uh, this line that I've uh, that I have sketched here. This line over here. Uh, this is called your activation energy or EA. Remember that this orange shaded part were the high energy particles. Activation energy is the minimum energy that is needed uh, for the reaction to start. So particles having activation energy are going to be these particles that have energy that is greater than activation energy. So this shaded part over here, these are the particles that have energy greater than activation energy. And these are the particles that would, uh, would be the ones that would be taking part in the reaction or that would be successfully colliding and producing a reaction. So you have all these particles. So to sum up the Boltzmann distribution, you have all these particles. These are your energies, uh, energy distribution of these particles. This is your energy axis. Uh, and the height represents the number of particles. So most of the particles are having average energy. So these are the energies, these average energies or close to average energies. These are your particles. Uh, remember, the higher up uh, the graph is, that means you have more number of particles. So these are your particles that would be uh, that would be uh, having average energy or close to average energy. Then you're going to have a few particles that are going to be having uh, high energy, but the particles would be fewer because as you move towards extremely high energy, the number of particles would become fewer and fewer. Then you would have some particles that would have low energy, considerably low energy, and those number of particles would also be fewer. Most of the particles would be at average energy. And then you have this activation energy point. So any particle having energy greater than activation energy, those are the particles that would be able to successfully collide uh, and they would be the ones that would be able to take part in the reaction.